James Brown was just a madman. And yeah. even that's being polite. I mean, he had the most extreme mood swings of anybody I've ever seen. Alan Leeds was an 18-year-old apprentice disc jockey in Richmond, Virginia, when he first met James Brown. James Brown loved disc jockeys more than anything on the planet because they controlled his, his life, because the playlist of radio stations were not regulated. So I could play a James Brown record every 15 minutes if I wanted to. And he knew that. It was July of 1965, and he was coming to town for a show. I badgered the local promoter for the concert that night to let me go interview James Brown. Now, at this point, James was beyond going to the radio station. You had to go to him. He was in a suite at the downtown hotel, and the program director said, I want to send this kid over to do an interview that we can play on the air to hype the ticket sales and so on, and he agreed to do it. So I went up and knocked on the door of his suite. A very attractive young lady answered the door, and she just kind of stared at me. Didn't know what to make of a pimply-faced white kid, because this was the age where he really hadn't crossed over yet to pop radio, but black radio, he ruled it. So finally, she said, I'll see if Mr. Brown is ready. And I stood at the door. And I'm shaking, just literally, you know, shaking. She came back a couple minutes later and escorted me into the suite. The sun's coming through the window, and it's almost blindingly bright in the bedroom. And all I see is this guy, big king-size bed, laying back like a king, propped up on about 10 pillows, just 10 pillows, and it's all covered with hair. And I'm like, in the middle, there's this tiny little face and this gruff voice as it, hey, kid. And he just kept looking at me. I think he was fascinated with the fact that a white kid was working at this black radio station. This is my idol. This is the king of souls. This is the guy. Well, let's do it, you know. 